Well, the, 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 the idea of, of art that's static, and um, let me give you an example, maybe it's easier with an example to talk about digital. I, I decided to, uh, remember I s talked about what a rectangle is, a rectangle is slavery, you know. Uh, a, a painting of some Rebbe in a gold frame is uh, is a Christian painting with Jewish subject, right? It's a rectangle. It's closed rectangle. It, it, and remember what we said about the Sefer Torah. If you have the Torah itself, the exact same content in, in, a, in a Chumash, it's not read on Shabbos. The form is an integral part of the process. You can't take a picture of a Rebbe and put it in a gold frame and say that's Jewish art. It's not. You see, it's Jewish subject, but even the most Jewish subject, the Torah itself, if you put it in another form, it's not appropriate. Uh, and so, uh, but so I asked myself when I was teaching at MIT, how do I make a Jewish portrait? How do I, how do I make a Jewish portrait? And and. If you take, uh, I was working, I worked for eight years at the uh, Center for Advanced Visual Studies, the Media Lab at MIT, and, uh, and I taught the graduate seminar on art, technology, and culture. And you know, this is something that's always appealed to. I made computer pictures in 1965. And so, uh, uh, high-tech, digital kinds of things are something that I've played with since the days I was a scientist. So I, you know, and I made art with it at the, what is the National Museum of American History in the Smithsonian in Washington has my artwork as the first examples of computer generated art. And, um, but, so, so, I, and so I, I said, well, how do I make a portrait? Then I realized that the word face is panim, right? The portrait you have to make is about a face, panim. But the word for inside, is panim, is pneem. The Hebrew word for face is panim. And the Hebrew word for in, the word for outside is panim. And the word for inside is pneem. It's the same word. Written the same way. Same exact word. You just pronounce it differently. Inside and outside is the same word in Hebrew. <laughs> so I say, okay, I got to do a, a portrait that shows the inside and outside simultaneously or in dialogue with each other or something. I need to play with that idea of inside and outside. And that's the way I need to make a Jewish portrait. So that's what I, so this is what I did. I took uh, a, a video camera, and if I put a video camera on you, for instance, and then I hooked you up to, I, to an electroencephalograph. I put electrodes here, here, uh, uh, to measure brain, your brain waves, you see. And then, uh, I, uh, that, that I did this first in 1980, so there was no digi digital television, and there were no digital uh, electroencephalographs. I had to build a digitizer and build digital video. But MIT, I had my students chewing, <laughs> chewing gum. We built digitizers. We, we built like built all this stuff from scratch, you know. And so, so, so you would look at yourself, and you say, "Hey, that's me." And that'll change your insides, right? You when you see yourself on the screen, you say, oh, that's me. And then you turn green. I wrote a lookup table, you know, where, where you have every time there's a change of your brain waves, it affects the change. Every time there's a change of your panim, there's a change of your panim. And you turn green. And then you turn green. You say, oh, I'm green. And then, <laughs> and then it changes your insides again. And then, and then, then your head stretches out like Migliani. Then it rotates, <laughs> and all the time there's this feedback loop that happens between the panim and the pneem. All the time that you see your panim change, it changes your pneem. And every time you see your, every time your pneem changes, it changes your panim. And you have this Jewish portrait, right? It's this flowing thing. You, you see, we we got Rav Cook says we got we got. Our sense modalities got mixed up and destroyed in the Galut experience. We became audio, verbal, book-centered people. And, and that that's not the natural state or the aim of Judaism. Because if you take the story of, if you take the Torah, the first parsha is about the creation of the world, and the second about Noah, about all of humanity. 
the, it, the story of our people just starts in the third parsha, right? Right? And, and how does that parsha start? Yeah, lech lecha, me arsecha, me moletecha, mi beta vicha, ela aretz asherareka. And lech lecha, lech means go, walk. But it doesn't only, it doesn't say lech lech, it says lech lecha, go through yourself. Lech, lech, you could have said lech me arsecha, to go walk away from you. But it says walk yourself away, walk through yourself. So that it doesn't only talk about a geographical movement, but a psychological interior movement also simultaneously. It says lecha <laughs> from, from, from your land, of your birthplace, your father's land. Move away from the familiar, right? That's what we just talked about, about the creative vision of moving away from the familiar. Lecha <laughs> where we are born, from your father's land. The most familiar things, walk away from them. And walk away from them physically, and walk away from them conceptually. And then, El Ha'aretz Asher to the land that you will come to see. When you see it, you'll know it. But what, what are the sense modalities that the Torah starts our people about? The kinesthetic and the visual, not the audio. Auditory, right? It's the Lech Lecha, it's kinesthetic, movement. And it, and 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 your, the movement will lead to your seeing. You see, and so the the Jewish art needs to be about movement, and needs to be in order to come to see. It has to be that's what it needs to be about, you know. And um, so so I, and so you have this. Maybe a, another thing. I I love to teach about kuzu. Do you guys know about kuzu? <laughs> 